Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alpha Born. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We are back building on official settings and we've been building a center underwater bubble base. I've never built here before, so we'll do the tour and then I will get into what I've built and why. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, but for now, let's get into it. So there you have it guys, please let me know down below your thoughts, but lots of little details that I found while 
building this base. So please stick with me till the end. But basically, it's not a six times damage spot, which I was quite surprised with. So that's obviously a big plus. Um, golems cannot come in, be on cryoed, or be brought out inside of there. In fact, even when I spawned a golem in, it was automatically teleported out. So that basically means golems, they could potentially tank on the outside, but they won't be able to do anything on the inside. So that's, that's a good plus. The second thing that I kind of noticed was the top of the bubble. You, you could say bomb turtles or bomb stegos through there. So that became quite a large concern for me. And it basically made me feel any sort of front defense inside the bubble is near enough pointless. I mean, it's good at slowing them down or it might do a bit of damage, but having any major massive defenses there will just be a waste of time because the Stego could go above and drop down behind them and destroy them from behind. So based upon that, I felt that really what I wanted was the two chandeliers both have 80 to 90 turrets on each. So 80 on the left, 80 on the right and that has the mesh ceiling above it so stego can't physically get there um, and then with the idea of stego bombing or turtle bombing in mind i actually laid three rows of bear traps in the exact position or within one step of the position where the stegos would land that's also another reason why i also did the staircase all the way up to the ceiling with velos all the way up top so again if dinos are being dropped in, I really want them to be being shot as soon as they enter the bubble rather than landing and then being shot. So it's just trying to figure out how to do as much damage to enemy stegos as possible, as quick as possible. And then on top of that, we also put down some of the jump pads, which of course, if a player or a dino was to walk on, it would bounce them back. Now with them you have to be very careful when you're placing them down and make sure you set them up correctly that they are bouncing away from your base. Um, in the video I know there was a couple that were looking to the left or looking to the right. And another thing as well, in my research for this base spot I noticed quite often people didn't do spam outside the bubble. So I was a little confused on that and I decided to try and investigate it. And at first glance, yes, it says you, there's no snap point, you cannot build here. However, with a few little building tricks, like finding the snap point first, you can then build out into that, and as long as you're connecting to foundation to foundation, then it will allow you to continue building. Downside is, of course, base spam itself, spikes, dino gates, things like that. They have to go on foundations, unfortunately. But again, Putting down more foundation spam means that players can't fob up on you so close, so quickly. So it's pros and cons really. And two more things I'd like to quickly mention before ending the video. First off, the front defense at the start of the bubble inside. Although it's small, I did actually count the turrets back 20 foundations. And what the plan is here is that that turret tower cannot be tanked on the outside of the bubble but as soon as they enter the bubble itself all the turrets should be able to reach them and my second point that i would like to mention looking at the surroundings around the bubble on the outside i actually felt it was better or would be more beneficial for me if i had lots and lots of little defenses all kind of watching each other's backs and protecting each other which is why in the video you saw lots of compartments and each compartment had about eight turrets on each. Some had six, some had ten. So I basically varied it up. Um, but instead of having one big bulk defense, I decided to have lots and lots and lots of little ones. So even if one gets destroyed, it's not the end of the world. But raiders actually have to take a lot more time looking in all different directions, trying to work out which ones to destroy first and working their way through. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you found this helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, I will see you on Alphaborn.